I want you to feel it spread up there. Up there, make some noise. Oh, it's nice. It's nice. Now I want you to keep it going and make some noise for Tony Cowan. He's a local man. Let's do it. Oh, good evening. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Has, uh, what a lovely welcome, especially has uh, had a walk out even before I'd come on stage, apparently. So that was nice. So, uh, yeah, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, my name's Tony. To, oh, thank you very much. Very polite, yeah. Tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, my motto in life, ladies and gentlemen, is always give 100%. Everything I do, I like to give 100%, which makes blood donation quite tricky. <laughs> My dad's motto in life was never a borrower nor a lender be, which is why he lost his job at the British Library. <laughs> <laughs> so it's nice to, nice to be here. I've had a weird day. I'll be honest with you. I woke up this morning, uh, had bubble and squeak for breakfast. And now I've got to buy the kids two new hamsters. <laughs> And I went to the garden centre today. Yeah, just spent a couple of hours standing in the middle of my garden. <laughs> so yeah, so it's, it's nice, nice to be here. Nice to be. Here. I love. I've, I've done this gig a few times before. It's always a beautiful gig. Here. It's nice. To do this. I love doing stand-up comedy. So I've not always been a stand-up comedian. I've had loads of other different jobs. So I used to be a child psychologist. Yeah, until I turned 18. <laughs> For a little while, I was the manager of a struggling boat shop. Yeah, I had the genius idea to lower the ceilings. Yeah, it was very successful. So immediately, sales went through the roof. <laughs> Studied, uh, studied as well, studied, to, studied actually to be a locksmith. That's what I studied to do, studied to be a locksmith. Yeah, I went to Yale. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you that. That opened a lot of doors for <laughs> me. Uh, so I did go to university, I did go to university, I actually studied medicine. Have we got any medical people in tonight? Usually in a theatre there's a doctor in the house, isn't there? If anyone's in, we've got no doctors in, they'll be down to me. I'll be honest with you, that's not good because my medical training didn't go well. I failed, I actually failed my medical degree and yeah, made a real mess of my human dissection. Yeah, that was all topsy turvy. <laughs> Just, I do remember a few things from medical college. I learned a lot about blood, a lot of facts about blood, for instance, I don't know if you know this, but the most common blood group in Taiwan is Taipei. <laughs> Most common blood group amongst depressed people, B negative. <laughs> amongst optimists, of course, B positive. And the most common blood group amongst dyslexics, typo. <laughs> Excellent, thank you for the one person clapping there. That was, that was the absolute correct level of clapping for that joke. It was, it was, it was worth one person's clapping. Thank you. Uh, also, I learned a lot about, I learned a thing about uh, gangrene. You're all aware of the, con the uh, condition gangrene, yeah? Apparently, that was, uh, that was discovered in Newcastle by a Geordie doctor. Yeah, it was looking at a bloke's leg. Went, I don't know what it is, but it's gangrene. <laughs> By the way, if you're not enjoying this, there's another 15 minutes of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, no. <laughs> Isn't that nice, nice to be here? I'm, I'm originally from, I was born in Ipswich, I'm originally from Suffolk. Uh, who, who's, uh, who's from Ipswich? Give us a cheer. Yay! Excellent, because uh, I'm an Ipswich supporter as well. Did anyone go to the match today? Yeah, yeah you all come here to try and forget about that. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, there's two comedy clubs in Ipswich at the moment, aren't there? One of them's, uh, <laughs> one of them's at the bottom of the table, which is... 
Not good, yeah, but no, I, no, and I lived in lived in Stew Market. Stew Market. Have we got we got Stew Market people? No. Yeah, who else? We got Stew Market people. Brilliant. Stow Martians. <laughs> Excellent. Is that because right? I haven't lived there for a long time? Is that what Stow Market people have, have are called nowadays? Is, that's what you call them because there's no sign of intelligent life. Is that? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> Stone Martians, <laughs> fantastic. So now this is this is where I'm originally from, but I don't I don't live there anymore. I've I've moved up to Leicestershire now. I live in Leicestershire, so I had to drive here today, which is a bit of a nightmare. Driving through Le sorry? Poor boy. Poor boy. Thank you very thank you very much. I can't I can't see where that's coming from up there. That's brilliant. We've got like a sniper in the back row, the <laughs> sniper heckler. That's fantastic. Yeah, no, no, less years, all right. I don't mind less year. Although I was driving here today, I was driving through less year, saw one of these signs. I don't know if you've seen these. Saw a sign that said "Hidden Dip." Yeah, went round the corner, crashed into a tub of guacamole. Not as bad as last week, though. Last week I was doing a gig in London, right? I had to drive from Leicestershire down to London, M1, got to the M25, and car broke down. Nightmare. Car broke down. I had to call out the RAC. And the recovery man who turned up, though, was a lovely fella. He said to me, Tony, he said, if I can't get your car going, I'll pull you off at the next junction. <laughs> and I just thought, bloody hell, that is comprehensive roadside assistance. <laughs> Unfortunately, sad end to that story, he did get my car going. So, um, <laughs> so, yeah. no, I moved, moved to Leicestershire for love because I've got, I've got a new girlfriend, Lady Joe. I've got a new girlfriend. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. No, I met my girlfriend while she was working at a zoo. Yeah, there she was, covered in monkey shit. Straight away, I thought, she's a keeper. Before I met her, I was single for ages. I was single so long, right? I got so lonely, so desperate. In the end, I made myself a Lego sex doll. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll tell you what, I loved it a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Although we had a very painful breakup. <laughs> I've, I've, I've got a new girlfriend and she's, she's got four, four kids, ladies and gentlemen, four kids. I've got no kids of my own. Give us a cheer if you've got kids. Yay. Give us a few of you, that's good. Uh, have we got any step-parents in? Give us a cheer if you're a step-parent. Have well, we got a few in? We a few, because, uh, yeah, my girlfriend's got four children, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll be honest with you, before her, before I met her, I didn't think that I wanted children of my own. And uh, now I know that I don't want <laughs> children of my own. But, uh, but no, I'm a stepdad. Stepdad, which is really interesting. I find it quite interesting to be a stepdad. If you don't know what it's like to be a step parent, basically it's like being a police community support officer. <laughs> you know those PCSOs that wander around, plastic policemen. You know, because basically being a step parent, you look like you've got some authority. <laughs> but when it all kicks off, <laughs> no one listens to a word you say. And you just have to wait there for backup. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's basically how it works. But, uh, but, <laughs> but no, I do. I'm, I'm enjoying it, though. I'm enjoying it. It's uh, nice. Like I say, your new girlfriend is great. Because I, I have a lot of failed relationships. I lived on a houseboat for a little while. And I was seeing the girl next door. And eventually, we drifted apart. <laughs> and I've been dumped loads of times, AJ. And what do you think is the harshest way to be dumped? Text, text. That's what most people say. Most people reckon text is the harshest way to be dumped. Well, I was at a gig recently. I said, what's the harshest way to be dumped? Someone shouted out, by birthday card. <laughs> That's harsh, isn't it? Harsh. Best answer I've ever had, though, was in Glasgow, up at a comedy club in Glasgow. Now, I love Glasgow. Have we got any Glaswegians in? Yeah. Have we got Glaswegian? <laughs> hey, sir, what's your name, sir? Craig, fantastic. Do you, do you like Glasgow? Do you go back there at all, Craig? It's great, isn't it? I love Glasgow. You seem like a friendly man. What do you do for a living, Craig? Unemployed. You're unemployed at the moment? Or what, what do you normally do? Project management. Project management but you, you, there's no projects at the moment uh, <laughs> for you to, to manage. 
No. But like Glasgow, I love it. It's a, got a brilliant vibe, isn't it? If you like your culture, like your music, comedy, drinking, it's a real party town, isn't it, Craig? The Glaswegian people like yourself have got a fantastic sense of humour, but they do scare me a little bit, Glaswegians, right? Right, because I'm a soft southerner, and you guys, lovely, friendly people, but you can be a bit intense, right? And I was in a comedy club in Glasgow, I asked them the qu same question I've asked you. I said, what's the harshest way to be dumped from a relationship? And I got the most stereotypical Glaswegian answer. It's a huge fella in the front row just shouted out, by crossbow! <laughs> By crossbow. <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah, I've had a lot of little different jobs, a lot of different jobs, and I love doing stand up comedy. You get asked to do all sorts of different things doing stand up. I do a lot of writing as well. Uh, I've recently written a film script about a constipated detective. Yeah, called No Shit Sherlock. <laughs> yeah. I've been working on a film about premature ejaculation, yeah, which is coming too soon to a cinema near you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, a, I'm an ideas man as well as a writer. I'm an ideas man. My brain is always ticking over. I'm always thinking of uh, different products and things. I love that programme. I love Dragon's Den and The Apprentice. Are you, are you watching a new series of The Apprentice, anyone? Yeah, I, I love that, because I love it when they have to pitch ideas and stuff, because uh, I've invented a few things, see what you think. Uh, I've invented a talking measuring jug, which uh, speaks volumes. <laughs> and am I disappointed that my voice-activated car isn't working properly? Well, it goes without saying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've also invented a, a medicated shampoo, Right, not only clears up your dandruff, but also helps alleviate arthritis and athlete's foot. And I'm going to market that as head and shoulders, knees and toes. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, my greatest ambition, though, is to open the world's best pub for short people. Although I fear I may have set the bar too high. I've also just worked out that my new shadow puppet theatre could make millions, although that is just projected figures. <laughs> <laughs> so I do, I do have a very active imagination. I can't switch my brain off. I don't know if anyone else is like this. When I go to bed at night, my brain keeps worrying. There's loads of questions that keep going through my brain. I have a lot of questions like, can you get acupuncture to cure pins and needles? Is Cajun chicken the opposite of free-range chicken? <laughs> <laughs> Do vibrators come with a list of dildos and dildos? <laughs> <laughs> My biggest question, though, the biggest question, right, that I still haven't been able to answer is what to call the underneath of an elephant. Craig, where's my man Craig? What would you call the underneath of an elephant, Craig? You don't know, do you? That's the point. You don't know. There's no agreed term for the underneath of an elephant. Some people would say belly. Some people would say chest, torso, underbelly. No one really knows. Abdomen. There is no agreed term for the underneath of an elephant. No, it's a huge grey area. <laughs> no, you're right. It's a long, tortured setup for that punchline. You're right. <laughs> I do love my animals though, I've got pets, I've got a pet, dog and a cat, and uh, I've got one of each. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm more of a dog person. We've got dog people, make some noise if you're a dog person. <laughs> make some cat people. <laughs> Always about 50-50, I like the way someone did meow up there as well, well done. That's, that's good. No, I, pr I prefer the dog, I'll be honest with you, I'm starting to get fed up with the cat's constant scratching. Yeah, I begin to wish I'd never taught it to DJ. <laughs> but I love my dog, I love my dog, I've got a rescue dog. Which is lovely, isn't it? Yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? Except when he gets called out in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm on a bit of a health kick at the moment as well. I've just signed up for a gym. Hey, Joe, went down the gym this morning. Jumped on the cross trainer. Although, to be fair, he wasn't cross before I jumped on him. <laughs> I don't know if you lovely people know this, but apparently the word gymnasium in ancient Greek meant naked exercise. Ooh, yeah. Uh, you try explaining that to the receptionist at Fitness First. <laughs> yeah. 
and the police. <laughs> Speaking of the police, I've been a victim of crime recently. Yeah, someone's been stealing all my bank documents. The police didn't really help. They just sent someone around who took a statement. <laughs> Which, if anything, made the problem worse, really. <laughs> And I'm, I'm trying to get fit, and I was quite proud of myself because I was asked this year, I was asked if I'd run the London Marathon for charity. Uh, I'd say no. Yeah, mainly because I've no experience of organising an event that big. <laughs> I don't think I could handle the admin, to be honest with you. <laughs> Probably need a project manager, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I do, I do want to, Is one of my other ambitions is to actually physically run the London Marathon, right? So I love watching, it's one of my favourite sporting events, and I love all the people that dress up, fancy dress, and I've had this idea, so you think, I'm going to run it for charity dressed as a jacket potato. I'm going to get a baked potato costume, run the London Marathon, all 26 and a bit miles, because when I cross the finish line, and they wrap me in tin foil... <laughs> just completes the look, doesn't it? There, so. <laughs> so, yeah, I've had lots of different jobs. Uh, lots of different jobs. I did work at the uh, Rampant Rabbit factory for a little while, so I didn't mean to look at you then, madam. <laughs> I did, yeah. You're, you're all aware of the Rampant Rabbit, yeah? Yeah, best-selling like, adult toy, isn't it? It's like the adult version of Buzz Lightyear, basically, isn't it? So, <laughs> but I worked at the Rampant Rabbit factory. We had a brilliant motivational slogan. It was, uh, if you build it, they will come. So. <laughs> So, so, yeah, here's, here's something I learned uh, the other day. I'll share this with you. Take this away. We amaze your friends. Realise this the other day, right? If you rearrange, if you rearrange the letters of postman, they get very annoyed. <laughs> Apparently there's some sort of system that... <laughs> Uh, yeah, so now I've been doing a lot of travelling, doing this job. I love doing, uh, love doing this job. Like I say, I do a lot of travelling. And uh, uh, not a fan of Germany though, ladies and gentlemen. Not a fan of Germany, I'm afraid. And uh, just purely because I had a bad experience there as a child on a family holiday, when my dad nearly choked to death on a German sausage. Yeah, and after that, yeah, after that, we feared the worst. <laughs> I like the fact that there was a lady over here who had made her own joke about my dad choking to death on a German. <laughs> Very rude, man. Very rude. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, well, what's going to tell you? I'm going to go in a minute. You've got a brilliant lineup, ladies and gentlemen. It's fantastic. This is absolutely lovely club. Thank you if you've been before, but keep supporting this. Uh, it's a beautiful venue, isn't it? Here and lovely club. It is always nice because uh, I've, I've had a few. I tell you what. I'll tell you a quick story actually because you, you've not. There was a, there was a bit of heckling going on at the start, but I, I got my uh, most brutal heckle recently. It was a really good heckle, but it killed me dead. I'll tell you very quickly a story. I was doing a gig in a in a Manchester rugby club, right? And I was booked to do twenty minutes. And uh, I'm not going to lie to you, ladies and gentlemen. For ten minutes, I died one of the worst deaths I've ever had. Right? I was doing pretty much what I was doing tonight, chucking out jokes, but nothing. Not even one person clapping. There was like nothing at all. It was like jokes, silence, trying to talk to people, no one wanting to engage, longer stories, nothing. Right? Ten minutes, dying one of the worst deaths I've ever had. Right? Uh, I started to panic. I thought I need to do something to change this. So people always say, don't they, that honesty is the best policy. So I thought I'm just going to have to front it out. So I said to the audience, 200 Mancunians, right? I said to them, look, guys. I realise you're not enjoying this, right? I'm not enjoying this either. This is not going well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and restart the gig. I'm going to try and reset the room. So what I'll do is I'll walk off to the side of the stage. I'll re-announce myself. And what I want you guys to do is pretend that someone else has come on stage, right? Completely different comedian. We'll restart the gig, see if we can get it going. And they were all up for this. So I walked off to the side of the stage. They gentlemen, I went right into the wings. I re-announced myself. I went, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Mr. Tony Cowards. And I came back out to the middle of the stage and they all clapped and cheered and went crazy. I thought, brilliant, I've got half a chance here. Right? So as the clapping subsided, I told a completely different opening joke. And once again, I got absolute silence. Right? <laughs> Where I was expecting a big laugh, absolutely nothing. Just 200 people staring at me. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're doing a very good impression. It's very good. It's good. <laughs> Just absolute silence, 200 people staring at me, and that's when I got the most brutal heckle I've ever had. Because just from the darkness at the back, a guy just shouted out, Bring back the first guy! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
so if you're going to heckle, that's the kind of standard <laughs> you've got to live up to. So I'll le- I will leave you lovely people. Uh, I'll leave you a couple of last things. What else should I leave you with? I, I, I am always thinking, but I do get confused very easily, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I was at a gig recently, uh, and someone, sh- someone told me that 40 is the new 30. Have you ever heard people say this? 40 is the new 30? Old yeah. people. Yeah, old people. <laughs> <laughs> but people say that, don't they? 40 is the new 30. Yeah, but you try explaining that to a speed camera. <laughs> Also went into a bookshop the other day, they in the travel section had a book, it was just called uh, 101 Places to Visit Before You Die. Yeah, I opened it up, didn't suggest a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'll, I'll leave you on one last thing. My name's Tony Cowens, by the way, if you do social media, Twitter and Facebook and that, sort of follow me on there. Uh, don't follow me home, that would be uh, terrible. But, uh, <laughs> But yeah, if you want to look me up on there, Tony Cowes, that'd be brilliant. And I'll tell you one last thing, ladies and gentlemen, because I, I, I was feeling tired today and, I, and I've got into alternative therapies. I actually went to give myself an energy boost today. I went and had a coffee enema, ladies and gentlemen, right? <laughs> Never had one before. Went and had a coffee enema today. If you don't know what it is, it's like a normal enema. You get a cup of coffee, funnel and some tubing, right? No polite way of saying this, but the tube goes where the sun don't shine, right? You stick the tube up there, you pour the coffee down the funnel, coffee goes down there, coffee goes up the tube, coffee goes up your backside, right? And inside your backside, in your colon there, there's loads of blood vessels. And what happens is the coffee goes up there and the caffeine from the coffee gets absorbed straight into your bloodstream, right, instantaneously, gets pumped all around your body, gives you a massive caffeine rush. Right, it's amazing, ladies If you're feeling knackered, tired, it's brilliant. Really does wake you up. Does, however, get you thrown out of Starbucks. <laughs> Ladies and you've been lovely. I've been Tony Cowards. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you very much, Sigil. Make some noise for Tony Cowards.